But let's talk for a moment about DHEA. So that's the other thing that seems to be all the rave today. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of my female patients are asking to be put on DHEA. And um, I'm not sure where this came from because DHEA has been around forever. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of the few hormones that's available over the counter. Uh, that's a relatively unique situation to the United States. Very few not countries. Not in Canada, though. Don't bring it back to Canada or else you get it. That's my point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so even even across the border with our, you know, neighbors that we're otherwise pretty similar to, DHEA schedule one. is yeah, it's like schedule 1. Yeah. It's if you have that, you're doing something more illegal than having anabolic steroids. Wow, I did not know it was schedule 1. And yet here it is. You go on Amazon yeah. and you can fill your boots with it. Yeah. Um which makes no sense. No, it makes no sense. I mean, uh, until you understand the uh the regular like you understand there's a, there's a political there's a dirty political story as to why that's the case there's some really backwards compound selections though that are banned like for example you can buy ephedrine in gnc in canada it's like why it's literally used to make meth mm -hmm. and then here it's a lot harder to get ephedrine but then you can get yohimbine here which is a fat burner we'll talk about later and in canada it's banned it's like wh who's selecting yeah. what gets banned a lot of women for some reason have recently like in the past few months been okay. sort of saying i want to be on dhea i want to be on dhea and you know they're somehow being led to believe this is the elixir of life uh -huh. and i'm sort of trying to scratch my head and understand why they're saying that presumably they're saying if my dhea levels are low it could explain my low testosterone and this is a quote unquote more natural way to increase my testosterone i haven't seen any compelling data that dhea does much of anything um what what did the data say i haven't looked in a decade by the way so a decade ago when i was really begin beginning to get interested in hormone tinkering mm -hmm. i came to the conclusion dha didn't do much yeah if you look in males you will find n nothing of i don't know no utility it has no effect on testosterone at best you get a spike in estrogen and no testosterone seemingly through you know whatever backdoor and yet it's a it's a usada wada banned drug it's treated yeah. just as testosterone would be or any other yeah which is wild but in females it actually is useful and can increase testosterone to the degree that if you had and this is a pretty wild study that i haven't really seen anyone talk about i'm sure somebody has but a few years ago i was looking into for the very reason of my girlfriend at the time was shut down to nothingness on a combined oral contraceptive. And I'm like, what can you do in this situation? And I found some papers that showed using DHEA supplementation exogenously. How, my, how much? 25 a day? 50. 50 a day. Okay. And a full restoration of total and free test levels while still using your combined oral contraceptive. Hmm. So like to me, that's pretty damn impressive for something that's not um like a cream you have to apply spray you have to put up your nose and this thing reliably depending on because again combined oral contraceptives there's many different variants you could get so depending on the brand you might have a progestin that's you know more androgenic or one that's less ethanol estradiol is or isn't included that will all vary but in general in like the traditional most sold and prescribed combined oral contraceptives it was restoring total test levels to that of baseline while staying on what is otherwise like a brutally suppressive compound. And do you have a sense of like what the increase was from what to what was total T on that regimen? Oh, it was like going from your natural 60 down to like 15 back up to 60. Okay. So 4X bump in total T. And um, w this was only in women on an OC? Yeah. Yeah. There's probably data on just not on anything, but I don't recall off the top of my head. Interesting. So why do you think women would be more sensitive to this? Probably because a significant amount of their androgen synthesis derives from adrenal hormone production, as opposed to men. It's like if you castrate a guy, you can still squeak out like 30 to 40 nanograms per deciliter. In, from his adrenals. Yeah. Yep. And in females it seems to be similar depending on the woman you right. know proportionally but it could be 30 to 40 out of her adrenals could be three quarters of her total testosterone exactly yeah. so for men it's like you know a drop in the bucket but for girls it's like maybe three quarters of the bucket I'd I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna check that paper out but that that's that'll be 
that might be a nice thing to have in your hip pocket if you live yeah. in the United States. One thing I can say though is DHEA in women who have natural levels that look pretty good. Like let's just say you're on you're on hormone replacement as is, and then you think you need DHEA for some subjective feeling of well being. There's no real biomarkers to reinforce that you're deficient. Your DHEs EAS looks normal. Your testosterone looks okay. And there's not really like a clear reason. You just kind of think you need it. Almost certainly the risk to reward is a little bit worse because acne on DHEA is very common in women mm -hmm. to a degree where it's like the proportional upside you get out of it. You're not going to get as much, you know, anabolic activity out of it relative to seemingly the androgenicity impact systemically, or at least in skin from what I've seen. And r remind me, we, we don't measure DHEA levels. We measure DHEA sulfate levels, correct? Yeah, that's the only proxy in like traditional blood work metrics that I'm aware of to test for it. And, and remind, do you, do you know why I don't, I used to know why we couldn't measure DHEA directly in blood. I think the majority of it is sulfated. So getting a direct measurement is not as indicative of, I don't know. The total just, body pool or yeah, whatever. Like, yeah, I, I wish I had a good explanation, but I just know that's the proxy. It's kind of like, why do we check IGF-1 for GH? It's probably something similar. Thank <laughs> you.